right. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Health public hearing for the Commonwealth's model regulations restricting the sale of tobacco products. This public hearing is televised. The following is the purpose, order, and conduct for the hearing. The purpose is for the Board of Health to receive information upon which to base its de uh, decision from interested citizens and residents to execute the Commonwealth's model regulations restricting the sale of tobacco products. The Board will hear any comment from those in support or opposition, if any. After comments are voiced, the Board will address any concerns or questions, if any, and will receive requests for additional information and comments or questions. Uh, the Board will discuss as to the need of any additional information, if any. Uh, the, board will the Board will announce its decision, if any. The Chairman will request a motion to either continue or close the public hearing, and the Board will entertain a motion for a vote, if any. I'm going to turn it over to the Health Director to talk about the conduct of the meeting. Well, first, I'll read off the notice of public hearing. So, as required by Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 111, Section 31, notice is hereby given that the Huffington Board of Health will hold a public hearing on Monday, March 25th, 2019, at 5.45 p.m. at the Hopkinton Senior Center to hear, accept comments, to consider adoption of the Commonwealth's model regulation restricting the sale of tobacco products. Copies of the model regulation is available at the Board of Health office. Written comments um, could be mailed to the department. We received none. Uh, this legal notice is also posted on the Massachusetts Newspaper Publishers Association website. Um, and it was posted on March 11th, 2019. So, conduct for citizens and residents. Each person must identify oneself. Each person may speak only once in support or opposition. All comments and questions must be addressed to the Board of Health. If there are any questions, they will be noted by the Board of Health, who will determine those which it finds pertinent to the matter. The Board of Health Chairman may limit repetitive comments. And with that, I'll turn it over to the Vice Chair. All right. I think we have one person here to make a comment. Uh, my name is DJ Wilson. I'm the Tobacco Control Director at Mass Municipal Association. I have a handout for you. I gave you an extra for the uh, member who isn't here yet. So uh, going on this, uh, the first two pages are summaries, a summary of each of the proposed policies that you're looking at, and each one has the number of cities and towns that have it, the public health reason we do it, and practically how it plays out. And so, uh, so, and with that, the next page, I have three uh, re uh, municipal lists that just show you what cities and towns have done. Three of those policies that are listed on that front, uh, front document. So the first of those cities and towns that have um, limited the sale of flavored uh, tobacco products and flavored vaping products to qualifying adult-only retail stores. And so that is the proposal before you tonight. And you'll see on page two of that document, we have 142 cities and towns that have done this. Four have gone beyond it, but you're looking at the kind of the original uh, federal court tested uh, policy that, uh, that was originally a, a, an ordinance in the city of Providence, and, and Providence won that lawsuit. So it has the history here. Uh, the industry, typically, tobacco industry typically does, really does not like this policy because it does limit where flavors uh, can be sold. But we do, with the exception of mint, menthol, and wintergreen for this policy. But we do see uh, kids, you know, this is a starter uh, kit for kids. The flavor, without flavors, uh, they would not be interested in grape, grape cigars. Uh, they wouldn't be interested in cigars if they didn't come in grape and a bunch of different flavors. Yeah. And they wouldn't be interested in vaping products if it didn't come in flavors. But it's a restriction, so it's actually saying, if you have an adult who loves a grape cigar, or an adult smoker who's quitting by using um, co uh, cotton candy vaping products, that, this, you know, that it's not a complete ban here and that's being proposed here in Hopkinton. A store could morph their business plan to fit the uh, adult retail tobacco store definition. The next list are those cities and towns that limit the number of, of tobacco pro products, put a cap on the number, and that's just to, uh, like liquor, to kind of limit the number of places that tobacco is sold. And lastly, um, the minimum pricing for cigars. Um, a little backstory at the, at the height of the recession, Providence got a big chunk of money from the federal government for one unique policy, and they did the flavor. 
Boston got the same chunk of money and they did minimum pricing for cigars. And Boston determined that around 250 for a single cigar was, you know, really deterred kids from buying them. They are very price sensitive. We are all, all are price sensitive, especially kids. So, you know, in, in towns that don't have this policy, you can probably still find a cigar for as low as 39 cents perhaps. Um, so, uh, so this really does raise the prices to 250 for a minimum and five dollars for multi packs, and that extra money it is not a tax for the town of Hockington. It stays that extra money actually stays with the retailer. But we do see it as a deterrent, as we do for cigarette taxation. We've one of the highest cigarette taxes in the country, as a deterrent from keeping youth from starting and trying to drive current users to a quit attempt. So, thank you. All right, thank you. excellent. Thank you very much. Do we just wait now and see if other people? Dr. Jacobs, would you like to speak? Well, I was just wondering if, I, <coughs> those co if there's a copy available of that report. Could I have it? Yeah. Okay. This, the handout? The one you just gave. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Keep it open until 6. Yeah, keep it up until 6. Yeah, so. we'll keep it open just yeah. in case anyone comes. Absolutely. We can do a vote at the end. Does anybody have any questions? I don't. I mean, that was excellent information. Yeah. And I really appreciate you being here. Sure. Yeah. Since you are our only speaker. So far. We got nine minutes. Question. Sure. Has there been any complaints from anyone to the Board of Health about the uh, increase in the uh, age to 21 for cigarettes? Uh, no. As, as a matter of fact, the majority of the, uh, so we have nine permitted tobacco establishments, and they all um, agreed that it makes carting most of them. Um, also, uh, liquor like establishments, yourself. so it makes um, it easier for them because there's a common, um, a common age to card to. Um, so it's been easier for them to train their employees, and um, it's been easier to simplify their um, their secondary card identification or license identification systems. So um, no, they had no. Sorry, last minutes when I was traveling that um, there were two estab establishments in Hockington where they were not carding appropriate, appropriately for cigarettes? That is correct. Yep. And they were, um, they were issued tickets last week and at this point I believe both have turned in or have paid their fines. Um, and in both cases uh, they have secondary um, or had secondary um, identification systems. So the, the clerk is required to visually inspect the license and then key in the birth date from the license into the computer for the transaction to go through. And it's our understanding that on both occasions, um, false birth dates were entered into the system to bypass the system. And they've taken... Um, appropriate measures to address that with their employees. They've retrained employees, and I believe uh, at least one has been terminated. So. And yet before you began sitting in on our meetings, we had this happen with two other establishments before. We've right? had a total of five. Five, yeah. In so the it was last 24 three. months. Yeah, uh, one of them was a two-timer. One, yes, one, <laughs> has, uh, one had a seven-day suspension. Uh, for violations in the same calendar year, all well, in the same um, 360 day period. So that's one of the things that's going to change with these regulations, right? It's going to be 14 right. days now for the right. second offense. Our, um, well, our, we're bringing our regulation into My compliance state. with the state yeah. so that it's now a 24 month. Yeah. 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 Most season 10s have a 24 month. Oh, okay. All right. So. And 14 days if they. 
oh, hit right. within. But it's also okay. the, the 24 the months, so that's it's a good. longer period nice. of time. Okay. Uh, but they have to remain uh, violation free. If they don't. Um, it's, it's, it's a fine the first time, a, um, a $200 fine the second time with a seven day suspension, and then a, uh, a $300 fine and a uh, 30 day suspension for the, uh, third offense. for the third offense. And then, if, should there be a fourth, um, they come up before the board for a hearing for uh, revocation of their tobacco permit. Thank you. And what's interesting is even for a busy liquor store, we found out through you know these people coming in to speak with us that losing their tobacco privileges is a huge hit. I didn't realize how many, like what percentage of the people came in just for cigarettes and you know they come in for cigarettes, cigarettes. and lottery, and they're not even buying alcohol. And also, especially with um, at least one place in town, um, cigars are a big mm. thing for them. And so for them not to be able to sell cigars for seven days, uh, according to them, it hit them pretty hard. What on the so. Flip side, there are uh, there's at least another establishment that's considering just doing away with the really the, the sale of tobacco products mm. just because it would make it, it would reduce the risk to the uh, the establishment. So that's something that they're considering at this point. So, um, so. any other questions within the next? two weeks we should have the results of the Metro West Adolescent Health Survey so uh, those results will be interesting to uh, to review uh, to assess how uh, the smoking rates and uh, both tobacco rates e-cigarette rates um, have changed over the last two years since the last survey was run is that the one that we as parents had to sign off and say yes. that we allow our kids to participate and it's all anonymous Yes. Right. Okay. But, uh, it's, That'll uh, be interesting. It's a great document for establishing uh, public health policy cool. and uh, educational policy. So. Excellent. Nice weather today. It's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> it is getting better. I drove with my windows down. Yeah. It was nice. So I was out bike riding in the woods again, and it was like loaded with mosquitoes already. So really? Yep. Yeah. Wow. All right, that's the not nice side of it. Yeah. Oh. Is that early? Mosquitoes, it seems yeah. early. Or mayflies, I don't know what they were. There were bugs all over Oh, mayflies. Well, if, it's, yeah. if you're seeing the clouds of them, yeah. those are the mayflies, yeah. right? Where all of a sudden you'll see this giant swarm like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we live. Um, we have we're on two acres, but our house is on like probably the only part of the land that you could build the house because the rest is all wetlands. Wow. And so as soon as we hear the peepers, we know the mosquitoes are They're coming <laughs> right away because the peepers are hungry and they don't come back till they know the mosquitoes are coming back. So yeah, I know it's soon, very soon. And yeah, we still it's like the tick season never lulled. Like it, it lulled for a little bit and it's it's going to be back already. As right. soon as it dries out, yeah. yeah, they'll come out. Ugh. So gross. Um, it's the best winter we've had. Oh, in yeah. In years, because of it was so wet that the ticks stayed under the leaf litter. <laughs> um, if you were a deer hunter, this was the best. Really? One of the best seasons <laughs> because your deer were essentially clean. Wow. I have another question. Sure. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, are any towns going above the 21 age limit for smoking? Not 21. Yeah. Actually, the state law doesn't permit it. It doesn't permit it. Uh, that's too bad. <laughs> it was part of the negotiations to get the state law in place that cities and towns uh, wouldn't go beyond 21. Hmm. I didn't realize that. That's yeah, not we, had, we had nobody who was entertaining it. <coughs> so. Right. But. And then we're still waiting on uh, on the towns who have gone beyond what we've gone. Uh, they have. Oh, for the other. For, 
yes. to, just to see yes. where they so end up in. We have four towns that have right. gone, and the flavor policy have gone into lawsuit territory. They've gone beyond the province lawsuit, the proper and federal right. court decision. So some of those being sued. Um, and is that when they decide to eliminate menthol? Right. So okay. Somerville uh, said that um, flavors, including menthol, mint, and wintergreen, and all e-cigarette sales must take place at adult-only retail tobacco stores. Mm -hmm. So they did two things. Nice. Okay. Ashland and Needham just did the first one. Okay. Then Dover did the, both of them, but with no, ex no exemption. Right. So that's where we're at. That's interesting. The both being, what are the two components? Uh, unexempting menthol, mint, and wintergreen. Unexempting, yes. And then moving all e-cigarette sales to adult-only locations. All right. Well, it's past six o'clock. Past six. Yeah. So should we adjourn the? I believe we're we safe that no one is going yeah. to come. No one else is coming. No. To uh, make a motion for a vote. Yeah. yeah, I motion that we can close this hearing and vote. Yeah, second. That's okay. Vote. okay. And so I guess you have to ask. We don't have a chair on paper. So has the board uh, made a decision to adopt? the model regulations? Uh, yes, I would vote to adopt them. Yes. Okay. I would second that. Right. Okay. Motion carries. Motion carries. All right, fantastic. All right. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All right. All right. All right. Thank, All right. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Sure.